Executive days of family-friendly entertainment, all f included in the price of admission. Some days, you get to learn hoop on this court from the UMass basketball team. Some days, you get to get a great performance by some basketball entertainers. Other days, you get to meet Hall of Famers and All-Stars. And then there are days like today, when you get to meet, I see all these Celtics jerseys, when you get to meet number one draft picks. Today, my friends, in a moment, you will get to meet the Boston Celtics first round pick, Romeo Langford. I know. Really special stuff. So for the next 25 minutes, I get to be talking. It's just me and Romeo. But after that, when you start to think about questions, I see a lot of youngsters out here who probably want my job probably want to be the one doing the interview, so you get to consider and think about questions that you'd like to ask a first-round draft pick. You'll get to do that. We'll pick maybe five of you to do that. Following that, Romeo is heading over to that table on my right, your left, where he'll get to sign an autograph for each and every one of you. Let's get right to it. Romeo Langford is the 14th pick overall in the 2019 NBA draft by some team in Boston. He's a 2018 McDonald's All-American, number the number five overall prospect in the 2018 class that included Zion, RJ, Cam, and Bull Bull. He's Indiana Mr. Basketball. He's the Gatorade Player of the Year in Indiana. And he is the Indiana Hoosier Supreme. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together and welcome Romeo Langford. I could have just read your resume for 20 minutes and we could have been done. That's how, that's how, that's how long this resume is. Romeo, welcome to Springfield, my friend. Thanks for having me. Um, can I start where I usually finish, which is I like to talk for 20 minutes and then sort of ask you about this moment, right? I mean, here you are in the Hall of Fame talking to your fans six weeks after you were drafted. Um, but I know just from talking to you for a bit, this is your first time to the Hall of Fame. It's your first time sitting underneath the faces of all of the Hall of Famers who've laid the groundwork. Can I ask you with this moment, of all the interviews you've done so far, and there's been dozens, and I think I watched all 332 of them last night, can you talk about this moment right here, sort of where we are right now, and what this means to Romeo Langford? Uh, this means a lot to me. Just uh, This is really my first time being here in the Hall of Fame. Uh, it's really surreal just to be in a building with so much history and uh, the greats that I looked up to playing and now I'm sitting not in front of them, but basically in front of them and uh, here with you guys and celebrating this time and uh, spending time with my uh, Boston Celtics fans. I always feel like when I look up and see Carl Malone, that's the most intimidating face. So just keep your eyes away from Carl Malone because I clam up every time I see him. So Romeo, um, I want to go all the way back, all the way back to as early as we can go. Uh, you grow up in a real hoop crazy area. I'm talking about the area across the river from Louisville, Kentucky. We're talking about New Albany, Indiana. And when I talk about Louisville and Indiana, that's about as hoop crazy as we get. When does basketball for you, I know you grow up in a basketball crazy area, but when do you remember starting to Start, starting for that love to grow, and who were those early influencers for you with the game of basketball? Um, really, it was just my dad, my dad and my mom growing up. Uh, when I was younger, my dad was still playing basketball around in New Albany and Louisville, like local, during three tournaments. So I used to go watch him play. And then like after he got done playing, I used to go home and try to imitate the moves he was doing in, a, in, a, in the house. But uh, really, it started off, um, in kindergarten, that's when I first started playing. But basketball was my first love, football was. So I really was a football guy growing up until about sixth grade, and that's when I decided to make the change. Not the change, but focus on basketball. Yeah. It's interesting. Um, I had Cedric Maxwell, Celtics legend, right? He's sitting in that seat last year, and he said his one piece of advice to parents was don't let your kids win. Did your dad ever let you win? Nah, you nah, can t no, nah, I was going to say, you can tell the truth. It's cool. He never, he never really let me win, but I, I beat him. Did he, you? 
He, <laughs> he don't like a minute, but he never really let me win. Yeah. <laughs> how old? How old were you when you first beat him? Roughly. He's he's not listening. That's cool. He never really wanted to play me in like one on one, <laughs> just because he knew he couldn't move as fast as I could. But he always tried to play That's me in awesome. shooting contests. And he used to beat me all the time in those. That is so cool. Now. Your, your story, one of the things I love about the story, the Romeo Langford story, is that, like I said, you're the number five recruit in a class that is, I mean, all five of you are really the type. When you think about, like I, I mentioned, you know, Zion and Bulbul Bul and, and Cam and RJ and Romeo. Your ability in high school to choose any prep school you wanted to was there. And you do, I think, the most Romeo Langford thing that I can imagine, which is, you're cool staying, you're cool playing, playing in your in your in your school. You stay at New Albany High School, and that to me says something about a, the character of a man. And I'm wondering, in those discussions with your family, with the people who you trust, were you ever tempted to test out the prep school market, or were you just really thrilled and honored? to stay and play for your hometown? Uh, I mean, like, before I went to high school, there was, like, thoughts of it because every prep school, like, in the country was hitting up my dad and mm -hmm. mom wanted me to go there. But then um, I have a sister, and uh, she was going to be a senior while I was going to be a freshman, so we wanted to go to school for that one year and say that we went to school together in high school. But really what, boi what it boiled down to was that um, – uh, we thought, we just said that, like, if you're good enough to play basketball and then play, like, at a high level, they're going to come and see you no matter where, you, where you're playing at. They're not, it doesn't matter if you're playing at Oak Hill or Nuwambi High School. If you're good enough, they're going to come watch you play. That, and that's the truth. I, I really hope that, I hope that more people are listening to that, right? Because it really does make sense. They will find you, they really, especially when you're the number five prospect in the country. And they're not ignoring you, regardless of where you play. Uh, and, in 2017, you have an awesome experience where you play on Team USA, the U19 team, with Carson Edwards, who's now your teammate, um, with PJ Washington, with Cam Reddish. You guys travel to Egypt, and for Team USA, you win a bronze medal. And I am very interested in the way that that experience, the travel, the international experience with a group of, with a group of dudes who you're going out on the floor with and competing internationally, how does that experience help to shape the Romeo Langford that we would soon get to know? Uh, that experience was like real good for me and um, the guys I played with, because being able to play with guys at my caliber, high level, and uh, compete for one goal, and that's when a gold medal, and then also traveling around the world and to Egypt to see different, um, different things, different culture, cultures, lifestyles, and stuff like that kind of put different things in your perspective just to know how grateful we are to live here and uh, all the things that you have. Can I ask a question about Carson Edwards real quick? Was he that big when he was 17 years old? Was he uh, that, I, he is just, I've never seen someone as thick as Carson Edwards. What does he do, between you and me, no one's listening, what does he do on leg day? What'd you say? On leg day, those th he is ripped. Was he giant as a 17 year old as well? Yeah, that's just what he's built. My goodness. <laughs> was so in that so in that in that moment, you mentioned PJ and Cam and Carson, all the guys on the team and all the ones we didn't mention. Is that the kind of moment where, like you mentioned, you're playing and, and getting and getting to know each other on a personal level? Do you guys still stay in touch? Like on draft night, is that like seeing all your friends uh, and just trying to figure out where everyone's going? Oh yeah, definitely. Uh playing with those guys up at a Real good relationship with a few of those guys, especially PJ Washington. I still talk to him every Dude. day. Um, uh, we really didn't talk too much before that, but after that, we just built a bond to the point where uh, we're close friends now. That's awesome. Your college recruitment is, again, another one of those incredibly Romeo Langford stories, right? You, I mean, again, you're the number five recruit. You narrow it down to uh, Vanderbilt, Indiana, and Kansas. What does Coach Miller say? to keep you at Indiana. What was that recruitment like to, to, to decide that you are gonna stay in, or because you're an Indiana guy, is that just the most lot? You grow up wanting to be a Hoosier, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, really like their big pitch was, uh, you're from Indiana, um, being an Indiana legend, all like that, but that really they didn't like persuade me to go there. 
Um, I, it really was just my decision going down. That just I just felt more comfortable and uh, more more home like at Indiana. I just felt like uh, the coach had the best interest in me, and that's what kind of boiled down to me to choose Indiana. I mentioned that you were Mr. Indiana, Mr. Basketball, and I look at you know you look at the list of Indiana Mr. Basketballs throughout the year and or throughout the years, and these are some of the legends of basketball. Who were the guys, the Indiana guys that you looked up to growing up, the ball players? Uh, really, none of them. I didn't, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't watch any of basketball for real. I lived so close to Louisville that I was more of a Louisville guy, uh -huh. watching Louisville Cardinals play. So I didn't really watch Indiana basketball until like junior high school when I was getting recruited by them. Oh, that's interesting. So you get to campus your freshman year, your one year, and uh, almost immediately you hurt your thumb. Um, and that's not, I mean, for a shooter, any shooters out here, you know that thumb, that thumb does some work. <laughs> but you still go on to score the third most points per game for any Indiana freshman in history. One, that's bananas. Two, I'm wondering what kind of discussions you were having, maybe internally and with your coaching staff, like that thumb goes out so early on, was there ever any thought to dial it back for the year, to rehab? and then to get back out and go out full 100 for your sophomore year? Uh, I mean, I had the choice to get surgery and like get the thumb taken care of right then and there, but uh, I just couldn't do that. It was really my decision. I really didn't talk to nobody else about it. I made it right then and there. I, I just loved the game of basketball so much that I couldn't just sit there and watch my team play for like three, four months and knowing that I'm capable of playing. And um, that's like, the, I guess you can say the toughness I have, just be able to play through injury like that. Um, that's one thing my dad, growing up, was one of the reasons he made me play football so I can get tough and be able to take hits and still be able to play. So that's just the way I am. Man, I, I got to tell you, if I sleep on my shoulder wrong, I call into work for four days. So, so there's that. I'm the ghost of Christmas future when you get to 42. This is the part that I was telling you about. I have three more questions left for Romeo Langford. So after this question, I'm gonna ask for volunteers from the audience. If you have a question you wanna ask, put your hands in the air, and one of my great friends in the Hoop Hall staff will come around and select a handful of you and put you in line to our right, your left. In the lead up to the draft, I know that there was so much buzz around you. The Boston Celtics, as I mean, I've been a fan my whole life. At number 14, I'm just confessing here, I thought there was no chance that Romeo Langford gets to number 14. But that wasn't the first time that you had talked to any of these teams. So when did you know that the Boston Celtics were interested in you? Um, well, uh, I mean, I had a couple of interviews with them like during the draft compound process, but draft night was real nerve wracking. Um, Pick 10 went by, pick 13 went by. I didn't know who I was going to. Honestly, I had no clue I was going to get drafted by the Boston Celtics until I look up and I see all the cameras surrounding my table. Really? And that's when I knew I was getting drafted by them. That is so wild. Yeah. I told my agent uh, not to tell me like any updates because I wanted to be a surprise. Oh, really? Yeah. Yes. I like that. Yes, sir. I like that. Yeah, so you weren't, you weren't on, I know you were on Twitter, but you weren't scrolling. No, nah, I, wasn't, I wasn't on Twitter. I was watching uh, YouTube videos. That's, were family. you really? Yeah. <laughs> well, do you remember what you... Here's a question. Do you remember what video you were watching when the cameras started coming around you? Uh, I think I was watching a NBA 2K My Part video. Were you? Like that, yeah. <laughs> Speaking of which, have you given thought to what it's going to be like to see yourself in a video game? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Is can't, that, I can't wait. That's I mean, going to be like, yeah. that's amazing. I play it every year, so now I don't, I don't even have to create my player. They're going to have it created for me. <laughs> they better get it right. They have to. <laughs> they have to. <laughs> Do you have a question for Romeo Langford? Put your hands in the air right now. Don't wave them like you just don't care. Keep them up. One of my friends on the Hoop Hall staff will select a handful of you uh, to ask your question. All right, Romeo. It's the Boston Celtics. There's so many Celtic fans here, and I am a fan of every franchise in the NBA. I love the game. I know you do too. But is there something extra special about walking into a practice facility and seeing 17 banners hanging above you. If you listen closely, if you put your ears to the tracks, you can hear Johnny most. You can, I mean, is there something extra special about putting on the, the Celtic green? Uh, 
uh, just real special just because it's the, the best franchise in the NBA, in my opinion, just the winningest in the program. And um, coming from IU, I kind of know what, what that's like just because IU with the five banners and they're chasing the six. And now the Celtics, we're chasing for another one. Even though we already have enough, we're not done, done yet. So Love that. Even though we already have enough, we're not done. Mm -hmm. To me, give me a sense of. I know you haven't. You've had very limited experience uh, ex, 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 with you know with the full vets yet. You haven't really had a chance to get steeped in there. Has anyone? Has any of have any of the veterans or the coaching staff reached out to make sure that you're comfortable and that things are going well? Or are you expecting that to happen in the next couple of weeks? Um, really, everybody, from the coach staff, the managers. Um, and to the, to the players that's there right now, that's training them. I feel like they've kind of helped me make this transition really, really easy and really well. And my final question before we get to the hard ones, these are the hard ones over here. My final question is, the last two months, you and I were talking a bit in the wings. The last two months for you have gone lightning speed. What's been the hardest part of you trying to readjust to your new reality? Not on the court, the games, you know, the. It's always going to be 10 feet above the, you know, the floor is always going to be the same length. For you personally, has there been, has it been difficult to slow life's game down a little bit? Um, I mean, not really. To be honest, it just feels like I'm still in college. I'm just not taking any school, school courses. I'm doing homework. But um, I guess the hardest part is just picking out furniture for a new apartment. That's about it. As a college professor, I think many of my students think that it's like being in college, but they don't do any of my work either. So. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Romeo Langford. So, Romeo, I told you we have some hard questions over here, which means I gotta lay out a couple of ground rules for you guys. So here's what I'm gonna ask. One, when you come on up, I'll take the first person up here right now. You let me hold the microphone. And the other one is you introduce yourself to Mr. Langford first. Give him your name and where you're from. I'm Mason Savard from Derry, New Hampshire, and uh, I love basketball. Yeah. Awesome. What's your question, Mason? Who's your favorite all from? Who's your favorite player all time from the Celtics? Uh, it has to be Larry Bird. That's be my favorite. Good. It's a pretty good pick. I like that. Great. Thank you very much, Mason. That Indiana connection, right? Yeah, Indiana. Here, come on up, bud. What is your name, and where are you from? Uh, I'm Andrew Bison from West Suffield, Connecticut. Hey, Andrew, what's your question? Uh, my question is, when you were at Indiana and you broke or uh, injured your thumb, mm -hmm. was it, were you out for any games? And if you were, like, were you thinking to yourself that, that you just were missing the game? Uh, no, nah, I, didn't, I didn't miss any games. Um, I heard it the practice right before the Duke game, and uh, I still play that next day. Um, I just put like a big cast on my thumb, so I wouldn't feel it. Thank you, Andrew. So maybe to get a shot for myself, I just have to hurt my thumb and put a, and then my shot will come. Maybe that's what I need. <laughs> Hi, I'm Weston from Westport, Connecticut. And my question is, who was your biggest idol growing up? Uh, growing up, I was a huge LeBron fan, watching him at high school, and then uh, with the Cleveland, the Miami Heat. Thank you, Austin. Hey, bud. What's your name, where are you from? I'm Corey, and I'm from Spencer, Massachusetts. And what's your build and overall in 2K? Uh, <laughs> I mean, I got like four players, but um, the two I use the most is uh, I have a pure shot creator, he's a 94, and a sharp shooting playmaker, he's a 95. I'm a pure sharp 92. <laughs> <laughs> I think I just witnessed something happening. He was. <laughs> I told you these were hard. Hey. Uh, hi, Romeo. I'm Isabel Kelly. I'm from Saratoga Springs, New York. Uh, my question is, what was the most important piece of advice that you learned at Indiana that you think will have an impact and an easy transition to the NBA? Um, I'd say the best advice I got was from my assistant coach, Coach Ostrom. He said, uh, if, it was, if it was easy to be great, everybody would be great. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Isabel. I promise we didn't wait for the KG one to intimidate you. <laughs> Hi, my name is Danny from London, New Hampshire. And my question was, what's your gamer tag? Um, I'm on PS4 and it's uh, yeah, yeah, underscore 22. Okay. So it's like my Instagram, but just an underscore before the 22. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thanks, bud. 
Ladies and gentlemen, one final round of applause for our new friend, Romeo Langford. Now, the fun continues. You can follow the directions of my friends and the Hoop Hall staff. We'll put you in line behind the far hoop. Two requests that I have.